What's going on guys, this is Rob, and let's talk about the Moon Knight finale. Obviously there's gonna be spoilers in this video, just FYI. There was good and bad with this Moon Knight finale. It followed your typical Marvel finale, right? Like literally a giant alligator fighting a giant skeleton looking guy while their avatars fight down on the surface. I mean, it's Marvel, right? It, it, it follows part and parcel with the Marvel thing. In truth, it was okay. Um, I really wouldn't say it was bad. I wouldn't say it was great. The show as a whole, I think, had its high points and its low points. I think the finale just kind of falls in a medium path. And in all honesty, I think that's maybe one of the biggest issues that Marvel kind of contends with at the moment is that while the, the Marvel formula and the Marvel method for making movies isn't necessarily a bad thing, in the TV shows, you have more time and you have more to work with. And so if anything, the TV shows should kind of be deviating away from the Marvel formula and the Marvel method where they try different things and focus on new things. And while that was a great aspect of the show, especially Oscar Isaac kind of bouncing back and forth between the Mark Spector and Steve Grant personas, that was really cool. Everything else felt pretty cookie cutter. Having said that, it was, you know, it's not particularly memorable. Right? There's nothing about this that was just like, man, this is mind blowing. However, there were some cool points in this. So the fact that we actually got to see Amit was really cool. There was a part of me that was afraid that we weren't going to, um, that, that we were never actually going to see the physical embodiment of Amit returning in the world. I do love the idea that Moon Knight itself is focusing more on like the earthly pantheon of gods as opposed to any beings that may exist out there in the realm and the, you know, whatever's going on. Um, I do hope that somebody like Khonshu does make a return and Thor God and Thunder if for no other reason, or Thor 11 Thunder, if for no other reason than the fact that basically we would we would end up finding out Khonshu was killed by Gore the God Butcher. That would be really, really cool. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. And in fact, I don't think that was the case in my Marvel Comics. I don't think Gore killed Khonshu in the comics. I know the Chaos King did. They, well, hell, the Chaos King killed everybody in the comics, but I don't know if uh, if Gore killed Khonshu at all. I don't remember off the top of my head, um, but it would be cool to see that. I think the bigger benefit to Moon Knight as a whole is really just that, focusing on the godly pantheon, basically saying like there are Egyptian gods who exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thor Love and Thunder is obviously going to give us the Greek gods. We already know about the, uh, the, the Asgardian gods, right? From there, and I don't know if it'll be something that'll be tapped into in, uh, in the Miss Marvel TV show. I highly doubt it. That show feels more like a, uh, a show rooted in perhaps in human technology or something like that, but it would be cool to see like Vishnu and people along those lines, right? Whatever kind of beings exist out there that are part of like the Hindu uh, mythology and whatnot, because that's really the bigger picture here. When it comes to beings like Mephisto, Nightmare, Cthone, all those guys, they all originate on earth. Right, they, they all originate, whether it's because they were kind of dreamed into existence by humanity or whatever it is, humanity's fears coalesced in a, in a human form, or I'm sorry, in a physical form, they all basically originate with humanity itself. It's not necessarily like, like Mephisto and, and Nightmare and those guys are not as necessarily on the nose as somebody like Cthone, who was an elder god, and then somebody like, uh, like, like Khonshu, who is basically a result of, uh, or the offspring of Amun-Ra, who was the being that actually ended up destroying, uh, or at least banishing Gathone or sending Gathone fleeing for his life, more or less. It's not necessarily that they're not necessarily that closely linked, but it would be cool to see. But right? it would be cool to see them focusing more on the on the earthly gods. But on the main show itself, you know, it was it was cool. I will say, Layla's costume when she was an avatar, that costume was amazing. Oh my. God, I love the way she looked. It was phenomenal, right? Like as soon as she shows up, and, and you, you know what she reminds me of? For those of you guys who ever who read Marvel comics, when she had the wings and everything, she reminded me of Archangel when he was uh, when he was the Horseman Death for Apocalypse. She kind of reminded me of him, minus the blue skin and you know all the dark tones and everything. But she looked phenomenal. She looked gorgeous in that whole that whole outfit. So I was like, damn, that was great. I did love. You know, one of the things that I thought was really really cool was Mark Spector basically making amends to Steve Grant and it, cut, it it brought a little bit of a tear to my eye not gonna lie <laughs> I got a little misty eyed in that in that moment right and I was reading the comments in the last video and I know some of you all said that like you kind of shed a couple tears when like Steve Grant was just locked down in the sands right like when he had basically was essentially trapped there we presumed he was going to be there and they were going to kill off his personality but that was really interesting I really enjoyed that that discussion the two of them had where Mark Spector and I, I kind of have to believe Mark Spector wasn't really just 
making amends to Steve Grant. He was kind of making amends for everything he'd done, which I thought was a, a, a pretty a pretty awesome deal. Now, here's here's the big thing, right? Here's the, the really big thing here. Everything else in the show really just kind of fell down into the normal Marvel formula. I wish we'd gotten a chance to see Bast. Um, I think that was just a great missed opportunity here. Because remember, the Panther Goddess Bast, while she is technically the patron goddess of the Wakanda clan, or I'm sorry, the, the Panther clan in Wakanda, she started out as an Egyptian goddess. And so I think it would have been cool to see some kind of reference to her. I know that like over the course of, of some of the episodes, people were saying like, well, there was a statue that looked like Bast, right? And different things like that. I don't know if the directors confirmed anything, but to see Bast actually have, uh, or at least appear in some capacity, the biggest problem that you have there is technically the earthly avatar of Bast is the Black Panther. And so unless the Black Panther appeared there, which if Chadwick Boseman was still alive, that would have been a phenomenal cameo. Tell me it wouldn't, right? Tell me like when they were all gathering around in the in the temple initially and like Arthur Harrow was on was on trial and they were like, Arthur Harrow, are you gonna bring back Emmett? And he's like, of course not. And they're like, see, he's innocent. Like, you know, when they had that whole, that whole scene there, it would have been kind of amazing, like not even kind of, it would have been phenomenal to see Chadwick Boseman there as one of the avatars and to see him as like the avatar of Bast, even if he was only in it for like five minutes, right? For that just one sequence. And then he, along with the other avatars, leaves. That would have been it. It would have been amazing. Oh my God. The internet would have exploded if that had happened. God, it would have been great. Unfortunately, of course, we didn't necessarily get to see that. And I think it's, it's for a couple reasons. One, obviously, of course, Chadwick Boseman's not with us anymore. And I think that Marvel, because of all the stuff going on with reshoots and everything, I don't know if they've officially figured out who the new Black Panther is going to be yet. I know they had, I think, Shuri lined up. I think with every Thing that was popping off with her uh, with Letitia Wright. Now they're they're moving over to the guy who played Mbaku, whose name escapes me, but he's a phenomenal actor. Uh, so I'm not really sure exactly how things are going on there. And even as far as the Moon Knight show, I think they I think the director or the the creator came out and intentionally said we're not trying to lock it down in any particular place in the MCU. It just kind of exists out there in the MCU, which I think is a bit of a problem. Um, and maybe we'll address that in like a future video. But uh, but regardless, um, I think that that it would have been cool to see a little more. Of like Bast, even just like a reference or something along those lines, that I would have enjoyed more over the course of the show. Now, having said all of that, um, here's the thing. Let's talk about Jake Lockley for a second, you know, kind of circling back to this, because again, with the character of Jake Lockley, I know that between episodes five and six, it looks like they've changed things so that instead of it being the series finale, it's the season finale. So I guess we're going to get a season two. And the post credit scene was interesting enough, right, where you basically had Arthur Harrow, who was in the asylum, and then he was taken out of the asylum, and he's in the, in the limousine, and basically Conchu's riding and Jake Lockley's driving and then Jake Lockley's the one who kills him. Um, I mean, obviously that whole, the whole context of that post credit scene was basically designed to illustrate that Jake Lockley was the one who was popping up whenever Mark Spector and Steve Grant were essentially blacking out. He was the one that was basically willing to do things that Conchu wanted him to do or wanted Mark to do, but Mark simply couldn't bring himself to do, right? So obviously Jake Lockley's the darker side. The fact that Jake Lockley's got darker colors indicates that Jake Lockley's color is probably black, right? Right? He was wearing what was in effect an all black suit for the most part, or a black outfit rather. So he probably turns into like a black version of Moon Knight, right? Darker, darker, the darker outfit, like a black outfit and that kind of a thing. Having said that, I get what they were going for. And I get that if they do, if we do end up getting a season two, that we'll likely end up seeing Jake Lockley in season two. But I really feel like this was a missed opportunity to give us the character of Jake, at least to give us some perspective of of what we could what we could get in season two, um, because I think that the the best moment to have shown him would have been in that final fight, right? That that last little fight right there where you've got like Amit and you've got uh, Khonshu who are facing off against each other and, and things are popping off. They're like these giant, this giant alligator fighting this giant skeleton. People are like, what in the hell is going on? You know, like all that kind of stuff. In that moment when, when literally Mark Spector is being overpowered by Arthur Harrow and basically Jake Lockley pops up at the moment we would expect him to, where as we'd stated previously, Jake Lockley manifests when Steve Grant and Mark Spector can't handle the situation. That would have been a great time to show it. Now, because Steve Grant and Mark Spector don't know about Jake Lockley, what they easily could have done here is just had the Lockley personality manifest and then make some kind of offhanded remark where he was talking more to himself than he was to Mark Spector or Steve Grant and say, don't worry, chaps, I'll take it from here. And then actually let us see, you know, Jake Lockley overpowering all those guys. Because at the very least, it would have given us what it was that we were looking for, but it would have given us just enough to know 
what Jake Lockley was capable of because there's still questions that we don't have the answer to involving Jake Lockley. The perfect example of this is one that a lot of you guys pointed out down in the comments section when you had that scene in the afterlife when you had Mark and you had Steve who were basically going into those different rooms and one of those rooms were presumably everybody that Mark Spector killed. But a lot of you guys looked at that and you said there was a kind of sense of, of almost kind of surprise on his face. Like, did I really kill this many people? But it's, it's one of those things where he also talked to Steve and he told him he was, you know, when Steve was like, like, these are all the people you killed. Like, how do you remember them all? And the response of Mark was, well, try killing somebody and see if you can forget their face. So it is a little murky. We don't necessarily know if it was exactly Jake Lockley who was involved in that, maybe a few of them. Uh, just based on that line alone, it could be one of those circumstances where Mark was quote unquote protecting Steve Grant, either that or Mark doesn't know that Jake Lockley exists. And so who else would it have been if it wasn't Steve Grant, <laughs> right? So he's like, I mean, I guess I did, you know? So nonetheless, it's, it's, it's one of those little, little interesting things, but we did get those, those kind of little moments here and there and those little things that teased into it, because then you look at the whole thing with, uh, with Raul Bushman, right? That's still exceedingly murky. We still don't know exactly how those events unfolded. We saw the whole scene in the afterlife. And again, it was seemingly Mark saying, yes, I'm the one who did it. And maybe it really, maybe that really is the case, right? That Mark tried to save them, but Raul Bushman killed everybody before he had a chance to do it and then he ended up at the statue of Khonshu. Who knows, right? It could be one of those things where Mark Spector blacked out, thought maybe Steve Grant took over or something along those lines. Whatever the case is, Jake Lockley somehow manifested. Again, not the most concrete evidence ever, but there are still some, some murky situations where we don't know if it was Mark Spector or Jake Lockley. So that could have definitely been our mystery and intrigue, but I think that not showing us Jake doing his thing was a real missed opportunity here because I feel like what's going to happen is by the time we get to the second season, if we get one and we end up seeing some scene with Jake Lockley where like he just starts unleashing hell by then people are going to be like, I mean, I don't really care anymore. Like I, I wanted to see him before. I don't know if I want to see him now. And if the context of the situation isn't equal to the first season in terms of like the severity and the significance and that kind of a thing, it'll be a, a kind of showcasing that'll essentially fall flat. That's kind of what I'm afraid of. People will be like, I mean, that's cool, I guess, you know, whatever. Whereas now in the moment, People wanted to see Jake Lockley, right? They wanted to see that. Now, again, as far as I'm as far as I'm aware, it was only between episodes five and six that they basically said, like, it's the season finale and not the series finale. So it could have been one of those things where Jake Lockley was just kind of a personality that was out there and was teased, and the decision to make a second season was not launched until, or at least introduced until after the show was effectively done, right? After it was done, like, being recorded and filmed and everything, and they're like, well, actually, people seem to dig it, and they really want the Jake Lockley thing. So let's just do a second season when we give him Jake Lockley. We can't do it now. We already filmed everything. <laughs> maybe that's 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 what they're going for. Uh, because maybe the entire ten, uh, intention was for Jake Lockley to always kind of be this, this mysterious personality, right? This mysterious third man that we never really knew anything about. And we wouldn't find out about him until the post credit scene at the end of the show. I don't think that's the wisest decision. But nonetheless, right? Just kind of speculating here. I mean, until the director or the creator comes out, does an interview and says, well, here's how things actually unfolded with the whole Jake Lockley situation. I don't know if they have or not we won't know definitively really until season two kicks off so i don't know i mean at the end of the day the show was not terrible that's one of the things that i want to specify here the show was not terrible by any standard of measurement right i don't think it was bad i think that it got a little bit of a slow start but so did wandavision right the first two episodes of wandavision lost a ton of people and then they ended up coming back later on in the show but had no idea what was going on because they foolishly dropped off in the first two episodes so you know it's, it's one of those things where the show started off a little slow by the time it got to the end it definitely picked Picked up, right? It definitely picked up. And as we mentioned, it, it had the kind of, you know, the Marvel ending, right? The standard Marvel formula, which again, I think in terms of TV shows is something they should start to sort of deviate away from and focus on maybe, you know, something a little bit different, right? Because it's enough to get it in movies. And when you get it in shows, that's when it really starts to wear thin. But outside of that, I mean, the show was fun and it was great. I had a great time watching it. Uh, where would, you know, in, in terms of how I would rank it, um, I would put it ahead of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but I would put it behind WandaVision, Loki, and What If, right? So I'd say it's like my fourth favorite show. Um, honestly, I feel like it's going to be a tall order to make a show that's better than WandaVision and Loki. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's going to be a tough one. Uh, I'm not saying they can't, but 
I think I, Moon Knight, I don't think was ever going to be that show. Um, if they end up doing a team up show with the Midnight Suns, that could be phenomenal. Uh, but whether that'll take place or not, you know, involving the Midnight Suns as we know them, I'm not entirely sure because technically Morbius is part of the team, but he's, I guess, kind of off in his own universe. Maybe, I don't know. Sony doesn't know. Marvel doesn't know. Nobody knows, right? Maybe he is, maybe he's not. Who knows? And honestly, who cares? The movie was awful. So there's my review. People have been asking me for a review about Morbius. It's a movie that exists. Sony made it. And now we're here. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about the Moon Knight show. And I will catch you all later. Peace.